All right, guys, I'm Vibas. Uh, I'm a designer. I've been a designer for seven years, and now uh, I run my own company here in Singapore. Uh, I, before we start, I'd just love to hear about the composition of the crowd. So how many people here are designers or are starting out or want to be designers? Anyone here? All right, a few people, great. Any software developers here? A couple, okay, great. Uh, any people who don't work in tech at all? <laughs> All right, great. And any, any people who are still in school, college, anyone? Or is everyone working? All right, great, perfect. Great, so, um, so my name is Vibhas. Uh, I grew up in India. Uh, I studied uh, product design at an art school in San Francisco. And ever since then, I've been designing at Indian startups. I started with uh, Paytm housing, and gradually I realized that the bigger company you work in, the less work you actually do. So I started moving to smaller and smaller companies. Until now, I'm at a two-person company, which is just me and one other guy. So we do all the work, so it's a lot of fun. Um, so I just want to give you some perspective on UI, UX. You know. So what is it? What is UI and UX? So a simple way to think about it is, so UI UX, you know, this, this whole thing, it started when people started using web apps a lot, when people st started using phone apps a lot, and design increasingly became an important differentiator for your business. Uh, your business can live or die based on how well your product is designed. And what does that mean, right? So there's two things. UI is what the interface looks like. When you look at the Uber app, when you look at any app, if it looks good, if it looks appealing, if it's designed well, that's UI. And UX is what your user experience is. When you actually use it, even a great looking app can have a very poor user experience. A simple way to think about it is, if a cookie, the way a cookie looks, that's UI. When you eat the cookie, what it tastes like, that's user experience. That's a very simple way to think about it. Um, so how did, how did all this start? Why, so you know, uh, seven years ago, I was in design school and uh, designers were starting to be given a lot of importance. And you know, increasingly, designers have become more important. You can get paid really well if you're a designer. And this all started uh, with very early with companies like Apple, uh, Amazon, Google, which began to show uh, the world that differentiating a product through good design can be really good for, dis for business. So that's when the world realized that good design can mean you, your company making a lot of money. So designers became increasingly important. And that's why you should care, because you can have a very influential, important career if you're a good designer. Um, so, so, so I think all designers, when they start out, when you start your career out, you start out over here. Everyone start, the most, the simplest thing you can learn is, how do I make my software look good? You apply principles of graphic design. Uh, the whole point of doing this exercise was that, so whenever humans create something, they're very protective about it. Your first instinct is that, I'm gonna show it when it's perfect. Your first instinct is to hide it, right? That is the worst choice you could make as a designer, right? The quicker you can show it, the more dirty it is, like make it out of sticks and stones, like show your design even if you don't have a piece of pen and paper. The quick, because the quicker you can show it, people will tell you what's wrong. And now Ron has already gone back to the drawing board, he's made a new sketch. As opposed to if we'd given him 24 hours, he would have gone and uh, invested more time in it, designed it, engineered it, and then if you try to convince Ron his idea is bad, he's way more invested in it now. Why will he change it? He'll try to argue with you. He'll say, no, 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 you're wrong. I promise you this is gonna work. So the less attached you are to your designs, the more objective you are, you know, the, the more open you'll be. And always be ready to like kill your ideas. We all have ideas we're very, very attached to. For example, this I, I actually personally really, really like this idea. What, uh, that you first you say, what time do you have to reach your destination? But if the business people on your team and everyone decides it's a bad idea, then you, know, you don't quit your job. You don't, you don't leave the room, you're like, oh, fuck this, I'm out. You, 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 have, you find the next solution, right? You find the next thing to get attached to. All right. 
So now down to the action. Now I'm going to show you guys some basic stuff about visual design, right? So, so far we had uh, how you do user interviews, some sketching, how you think of concepts, right? And now let's talk about visual design. So one important thing to remember is that you know people have been designing interfaces for like 20 plus years now, right? So it sometimes is a good idea, only sometimes, to like build on, on their knowledge. So you go out and you look at other stuff people have done because some problems will have been solved. But you know, don't always do this because then how are you going to come up with fresh ideas? But sometimes it's good for reference, right? So um, a website designers commonly use, uh, some, who's familiar with Dribbble here? Anyone? There's a few people, great. So a website people commonly use to look at um, designs is called Dribbble, right? Uh, you go in here and everyone posts shots of their design. So um, you can look at a similar category to what you're designing or you can look at completely different categories. So if I was designing a maps, you know, a transport app, I could get inspiration from like an email app or I could get inspiration from um, something completely, or, or transport apps themselves, right? So this is a good place to look. So you know, there's some examples here. But this is just for reference, right? So, I want everyone to go to figma.com. <coughs> How many people don't have laptops? Ooh. Okay. You know when everyone has signed up, yeah. It's a free software. It lets you design, uh, make design interfaces within your browser itself. No download required. So. Okay, how many people have managed to create a blank project and reach this screen? Zero. So, um, so software like Figma, it, it didn't exist like five years ago. And Figma is a very lightweight software that lets you prototype interfaces. Uh, 10 years ago, people used to use Photoshop for designing interfaces, but Photoshop was built for photographers. So uh, the industry has grown so big that there's now very great software like this. Um, so Figma starts with an artboard. Um, so we're designing for phones. So we, we're going to place a phone size frame, right? And then what I like to do is So um, can everyone try this please? Just take a photo of your sketch with your, with your phone and try and get it onto your computer. <laughs> so you can just, it's a little, yeah. How are they gonna? See if you can just email it to yourself <laughs> and then you drag it, you can just drag it into Figma.
All right. So let's start designing the first screen, right? So this app is called Pick the Best. Uh, where do you go? Where do you, where do you want to go? Where are you now? And by what time? So on the on the first screen, it makes you choose uh, spe specify these three things, and then it shows you the options, right? So so you press R to draw a box. That's how this works. Press R, and then you can just drag a box out onto the screen. You can choose a color, any color you want. Right? You can change the color by going in here. So let's not choose any of Grab's colors. Let's say this one is, let's pick this one. So then to add any piece of text, press T. And then you just drag out a text box. Now right now I'm typing, you can't see anything, and I think it's because of... Sorry, how do you, how do you draw the first iPhone screen size? Sure, sure. So uh, right here, you see frame. Or just, just press F, and you'll see this menu on the right. And then you just pick iPhone 8 or so press F so usually it's one frame per screen and then even for multiple states you can have different screens so now we have some text let's change the color to white it's called pick the best so you use this button to center text. Let's make it big. Too big. All right, guys. So, uh, so does anyone know anything about fonts? Fonts. How many people know what a font is? Great. All right, so font, fonts are all the different ways you can write a piece of text. All the different styles, designs are called fonts, right? Um, so here's all the different ways we can write it. Does anyone have an opinion on why one is better than the other? Is this one good? Who said no? Why, why is it not good? Not legible. Not legible, yeah. That's great. So everything has to have a function, right? It has to be easy to read. What about this one? You don't like it? Why not? It's a bit childish, uh, exactly. So fo font designs, you use them appropriately. Each font evokes a different purpose. If you were making a finance app or something, then you use, uh, you know, or a wedding invite or something, then you use something like this. Um, certain fonts look childish, certain fonts look professional. And so you, when you're, you know, in your everyday life, you observe these things. When you look at the newspaper, Spend two seconds thinking about the font choice and how it makes you feel. And when you go to drop your kids off at the school, look at the fonts and think about how they make you feel. All these choices are very deliberate. And similarly, when you're designing your app, you have to be very deliberate about these choices. So this app is called Pick the Best, right? So I'm just going to pick a font where... So I've just picked a random font, which I thought was uh, was good. 
One second. So I have my I have my sketch nearby for reference. This is what I keep looking at. So then again for forms, you know forms we again there's many different kinds of forms you can do. This is another thing you have to look at. Um, let's look at different websites. Let's look at TripAdvisor. So look at the search bar on TripAdvisor, right? That, that's a certain design. Let's look at uh, Airbnb. So you see this one is totally different, the way they're doing their forms and their pop-out experiences. So there's lots of different ones. You have to look at the one which works for you best. And I'll show you how to do um, animations and all that stuff in a second as well. So let's just do. As much as you can with your designs, try to be subtle. So when you're making a box, don't just give it a full black frame. I mean, unless you very deliberately want to. Think about subtlety, right? There's thousands of shades of gray in between like white and black. How can we make this more subtle? Maybe that's all that needs, right? Okay, we gave that form a little shadow. So, Now we have to tell the user So very simple, right? We're just taking pieces of text and putting them in boxes. It's dead simple. So the last one, maybe we don't want it to be as simple as just a text input. What other ways of picking a time can we... Now let's go and look at what other designers have done. So we go to Dribble and we search for a time picker. Let's see. So this is for a hair salon. Uh, so this one, someone has, this is more for appointments. So someone has just used big boxes, right? For different slots you can do. Let's see what else. This is another classic one we all see on our phones. It has a rot rotary dial sort of thing. And also at the bottom, this is pretty interesting. This says 30 minutes, one hour, three hour, 24 hours. So those are sort of quick shortcuts. You could have this one where you sort of scroll horizontally. You could have something like this. I really like this one because it seems really dead simple. If I'm calling a cab and going somewhere, chances are I want to reach within an hour, probably at least within Singapore, unless you're going to Malaysia, you will be there within an hour. So let's use something like this. So always like, don't be afraid to look at things and use them for reference. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so we're just gonna keep this to the side. And so for our third one, we're gonna try and make something like this. Right? 
So now the, the best way to learn graphic visual design is by looking at other people's work and try to copy it, try to get it as close as possible. Now if I were you and I was just starting out, I would look at this and I would try to copy it and I'll try and write the words down. I'll say, okay, 11.05, okay, then I'll make a few more copies of it. And then I'll say, huh, mine doesn't look half as nice as that one. How do I get it to look like that, right? Let's start noticing the attributes of the text, right? What, what do you guys notice about this one right here? Does anyone want to say anything? It's pretty grayed out, right? So how to create hierarchy in text? That's a big, that's a big, big thing to learn. So when you look at this picture, the first thing which screams out is the 11.15 a.m. That's the big text. And the other one is less important. How do you think, how do you make things more important and less important? Just if you master that trick, you will be able to create beautiful designs. Because this is not beautiful, this is functional. The designer wants you to be looking at the big piece of text has made it more important. So we take this one, let's make it black. That means a heavier weight. These are all the different weights in text. Light, medium, black. Let's make it bigger than the others. So the second tool we're using is size. You notice that the AM is much smaller than the rest of the text. Right, starting to look a little bit closer, you'll notice that the AM is in a lighter weight than the normal text. So make it medium. So there, if you press Control and C, there's a color picker, color picker tool. So you can just pick colors which you see around. So let's say we want to use this color. So now that's closer. Okay, starting to look a little bit closer. Now we take the others, we bring them down like this. And now let's try and make the other pieces of text look like that one. So. So this one is called letter spacing. This one lets you space your letters out more. So you guys can see we're starting to get closer to something which looks nice, right? And you, you can endlessly mess around with this design. Um, now let's look at the next screen. <coughs> now a, a, a big part of design is also imagery and how to simplify things for people, right? So the only language everyone in the world speaks is images. So th th there's a site called the Noun Project. And what this site tries to do is give you an icon for everything in the world. So let's look at um, training, for example. So it tries to give you images that you can use for any of these things, right?
So now let's look at transport options here. So you just right click, copy image, and this is what's great about Figma. You can just have the image. There you go. So now you guys will see, I'm just posting the images in. I'm just pasting them in. And so, so now, of course, one option when you're making the screen is to just make things like this, right? But like I think we saw in someone's design who had made a table, people read things much better when there's some order within the chaos, right? Um, for example, let me show you guys a website I found recently. Look at this website. Kind of chaotic, right? But still, they've lined stuff up in grids, trying to make it easy for you to browse those titles of all those stories. But going back to our design, how do we line stuff up in grids? So if you press control, one sec. So if you go to view and show rulers, it lets you drag out these rulers. And these won't actually show up in your design. These are simply helping you line stuff up. So now I have this really nice grid where I can line up all these icons. Let's look at the original design again. It was like this, right? So let's. So for each of my each of my images, you can see I'm just trying to make sure the height of each one is same, and they line up with the one next to them and the one below them. You usually wanna, you wanna measure this, so if you, so you can read at the bottom there, it's 76 by 57, so the size of the rectangle we just drew. So let's try and maintain that size everywhere. So 76 by 57, so we keep this one here. So that means our rocket is too big. Anyway, so on and so forth. So similarly, you'll start to notice that uh, once you do these, uh, once you do this, things become easier to absorb rather than if you just chaotically put stuff anywhere. Okay, so in this design, this person has shown all the vehicle types. Within the vehicle types, uh, within the vehicle, they've written the name of the brand or the service provider. Under the vehicle, they've written the cost and the time associated with each, right? So let's do that. So again, for text, we're going to create a, create a hierarchy. So um, which text do you think is more important? The name of the brand, the price, or the time? Does anyone want to say which one is more important? Price is more important for you? It does, there's no correct answer. So does anyone want to say? All right. So for Lewis, price is most important. 
So we're going to make the price bold in black, and we're going to tone down the other choices. So we will make this smaller. Grab. Maybe we give it a grab color so you can associate it with grab. You can even use the grab logo if you'd like. So I'm just screenshotting their logo and using it directly. Right? Would you say in this in this design right here the price is still more important or the logo is more important? Which one catches your attention first? Price? Okay, good. <laughs> All right. And then we'll say five minutes. So right now this looks like a lot of information and it's simply because they're all fighting f with each other for your attention. They're all, I would almost say, almost equally important. Of course that's subjective. So the more you create a hierarchy by making these choices in your head of which one is more important, the easier a design becomes to absorb. So let's say, I really want to tone this down. So this one's called a corner radius. You give a corner radius to something when you want to make it more friendly. Like your, like your iPhone has a corner radius. If it had 100% sharp edges, then you would get stabbed every day, but you don't. <coughs> so another concept is opacity. This is another tool you can play with. So you see, these are all the different opacities at which this thing can exist. So you decide which one looks best to you, which one works best for your user, and you make that choice. Now let's make a choice. Maybe, since Lewis said price was most important, maybe we say the price we're going to put in a, in a dedicated bar at the bottom of each design. And this bar, let's make it the color of the logo. It doesn't need to be that big now. So you can see slowly your design is getting better, right? Slowly. So it takes time. But again, right now we're just trying to make it look good. This doesn't necessarily mean that when you go out and you test it with people, they'll actually think it's a good idea. They'll actually think uh, they would want to use this interface. Right now we're just trying to make it look pretty. So you can duplicate stuff by holding down the Alt key. Right, now let's uh, make some other companies for
So as a designer, you have to get really good at stealing stuff. That's one of the big skills required. So I just go copy image. Bring it into my design. Make it the right size. So you can see now we've started to sort of design this screen, right? We've tried to, tried to give all the relevant information. We've tried to give you a picture, the name of the brand, the price, the time. And the idea is when you click one of these buttons, you immediately go to the next screen. So, okay, let's say you've reached this stage, right? And now you wanna test your designs. Now you wanna see, how do I show this to someone so they can actually play with it and I can get their feedback. So we're gonna use another software. This one's called Principle. So let me show you, this one is Mac only, but uh, there's more options available for Windows, uh, like Adobe XD and others. So Principle lets you animate your ideas. So principle also starts with a blank screen, but principle assumes that you've already designed your app on another app like we just did in Figma, for example. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and bring we're gonna try and bring our design into principle. And principle lets you interlink screens between each other. So let me show you very simply what that means. Okay, so now what, what I'm telling principle is, when I click here, take me to that screen. And you can see it does that. Principle also lets you make components, which means if I wanna create a micro interaction on this component, whenever I tap on this component, I want it to Let's see what that does.
So you can see I've created a little press state right here for my component. Um, and this works on my phone as well. 